Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If I could ask you all to take your seats, please. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to a very special event, the 28th Annual Hofstra Gala. My name is Alan Kelly and I serve as the university's senior vice president for development and alumni affairs. On behalf of the university, I thank you for joining us and for helping us celebrate tonight's honoree. The annual Hofstra Gala is incredibly important to our university community. Not only do we raise significant support for scholarships, but we honor an individual whose connection to Hofstra deserves considerable recognition. We could not be prouder than we are tonight to recognize David Mack. <laughs> Hofstra alumnus from the class of 1967. You will hear all about David's accomplishments and his legacy shortly, but thank you for being here to celebrate with us. Tonight's success is due to the commitment and hard work of so many people. Please join me in recognizing the gala dinner committee for their tremendous efforts in raising significant support for this evening. It's now my privilege to recognize the following members of Hofstra University's Board of Trustees who are here with us this evening. Uh, please hold your applause until all names have been called. Trustee Fred Davis, Trustee Mike DiDomenico, Trustee Craig Dempster, Trustee, Trustee Jerry Kremer, Trustee Dr. Diana Lake, Trustee and tonight's honoree David Mack, Trustee Stella Mendez, former chair of the board, Trustee Marilyn Monter, Trustee Robert Rosenthal, Chair of Hofstra's board, Donald Schaefer, Trustee Mike Seaman, Trustee Leonard Shapiro, and Trustee Joe Sparaccio. Thank you. Also allow me to recognize the current president of the Hofstra Alumni Organization, Heather Cohn, and alumni organization past presidents, Hillary Sirota-Needle and Dan DiStefano. We're also pleased to have the following current and former elected officials and dignitaries here with us this evening. The New York State Controller and Hofstra alumnus, Thomas DiNapoli. Nassau County Executive, Bruce Blakeman. Chair of Nassau County Republican Committee, Joe Cairo. Town of Hempstead Councilman, Chris Carini. Town of uh, North Hempstead Supervisor, Jen DeSena. Former Hempstead Town Supervisor, Laura Gillen. Nassau County Legislator, Samantha Getz. Former New York State Assemblywoman, Judy Griffin. New York State and Nassau County Democratic Chairman, Jay Jacobs. Former Town of Hempstead, North Hempstead Supervisor, John Kamen. North Hempstead Republican Committee Chair, Frank Maroney and Peggy Maroney. City of Glen Cove Mayor, Pam Panzenbeck. Nassau County Controller, Elaine Phillips and Andrew Phillips. New York State Senator, Steve Rhodes. Town of Oyster Bay Supervisor, Joe Saladino and Helena Howlett. Former New York State Representative, Harvey Wiesenberg. And Chief of Staff for New York State Democratic Committee, Chris Melanchuk. We're tremendously grateful for the generous support we received for, for tonight's event, so allow me to formally thank our sponsors for their investment in the university. Board Member Circle Sponsor, Sandra and David Mack. <laughs> President Circle Sponsors, Carol and Alan J. Burnan, the Berlin Family Charitable Foundation, Frank G. Zarb, and Leonard and Carol Shapiro. Our benefactor sponsors, Mary and Peter Calico, Northwell Health. Our scholar sponsors, Barnes and Noble, Dr. Lawrence Herbert, and Marilyn and James Simons. Our patron sponsors, Breslin Realty Development Corp, Doreen and Michael DiDomenico, Aaron and Craig Dempster, and Pat and John Healy. 
ENA Construction, the Faye J. Lindner Foundation, KPMG, Jody and Robert Rosenthal and First Long Island Investors, Tony and Martin Sosnoff, and Structure Tone. And tonight's cocktail reception underwriter, Campus Dining by Compass Group. Thank you so much for all of your support. Now it's my pleasure to welcome to the podium the chair of the Hofstra Board of Trustees, Donald Schaefer. Thank you, Alan. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like, like to welcome you all to Hofstra University's 28th Annual Scholarship Gala, honoring Trustee David S. Mack and his remarkable contributions to our university and the community. Let me first recognize the Gala Committee for all their efforts to make tonight's celebration a success. For the students who benefit from scholarships, and for our extraordinary honoree. I also want to thank all of you for joining us here this evening. I have the privilege of calling tonight's honoree a friend. David Mack, a passionate Hofstra alumnus, has been a faithful steward to his alma mater, dedicating his time, energy, and resources over many decades to the important needs of this outstanding institution. He has served on the Board of Trustees for over 40 years, was a driving force behind three presidential debates on campus, putting Hofstra on the national stage, and has helped the campus achieve goals that directly benefit the students of this university. He is, without question, an integral part of Hofstra's legacy. As a successful businessman and exceptional philanthropist, David has been generous to many causes, not just Hofstra, and one doesn't need to go far to see those efforts recognized. David and his wife Sandra's names are evident across Long Island and beyond, including at Northwell Health, the Nassau County Police Training and Intelligence Center, and of course on many of Hofstra's marquee buildings, including tonight's location, the David S. Mack Sports and Exhibition Complex. David and Sandra's generosity is prolific. They give to make an impact on individuals, institutions, and communities. They are actively involved in the organizations they partner with, and through these efforts, they make a difference. Their actions serve as an inspiration for all of us. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I thank you, David, for your generosity, your commitment, and most importantly, for your example. Enjoy your evening, everyone. It is now my privilege and distinct pleasure to introduce the President of Hofstra University, Susan Poser. Thank you, Don. Good evening, and welcome to Hofstra University's 2024 gala. It's a joy to see everybody here on such a beautiful night. Tonight, we celebrate all that makes Hofstra University exceptional, and we celebrate our honoree, my friend and secretary of the Hofstra Board of Trustees, Mr. David Mack, the incomparable Mr. David Mack. We all We also celebrate all of you whose generosity of time, treasure, and talent is central to Hofstra's past and future success. I want to begin by thanking Alan Kelly and the Development and Alumni Affairs team and Terry Coniglio and the Marketing and Communications team for their work in putting together this beautiful event. Let's give them a hand. And as is our tradition, at this occasion, I will now provide a brief update of some of the highlights of the past academic year. The most important part of any institution is, of course, its people. And Hofstra continues to attract outstanding administrators, 
faculty, and trustees. Since this time last year, we have welcomed new members of our community in all of these categories. Last spring, Dr. Renee McLeod Sorgen became Dean of the Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Dr. McLeod was previously Vice Dean of that school. Dr. Eva Badowska, formerly a Dean at Fordham University, joined Hofstra on July 1st as Dean of the Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Dr. Reggie Alston joined on August 1st from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign to lead the School of Health Sciences, previously known as the School of Health Professions and Human Services. Lori McAllister joined on January 1st as the Dean of the, Don, of the Joan and Donald E. Axon Library. She hails from Arizona State University. The School of Education is being led by Interim Dean, Dr. Kevin Kumashiro, and the search for a new Permanent Dean of Education will be underway soon. Last month, we announced the appointment of Professor Jenny Roberts as the new Dean of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law. Roberts is currently a professor of law and co-director of the Criminal Justice Clinic at American University Washington College of Law, and she will begin on July 1st. I want to thank Julian Koo for his service over the past year as Interim Dean of the Law School. At Hofstra, we remain steadfast in our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I am pleased to share that Cornell Craig, formerly Hofstra's Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer, became Hofstra's inaugural Vice President for Equity and Inclusion. Over the past year, we hired 38 new faculty, 32% of whom are faculty of color. It is so important that our faculty begin to look more like our student body. And finally, although Alan just introduced the trustees who are present, and we're very grateful for their presence, I want to note that since I arrived at Hofstra almost three years ago now, we have added five members to the Hofstra Board of Trustees, all of whom are alumni and are bringing enormous expertise and dedication to the board and to the future of Hofstra. And they are Mr. Fred Davis, Mr. Craig Dempster, <laughs> Mr. Kurt Lambert, Ms. Catherine Marinello, and Mr. Jason Savarese. And while it is always a joy to welcome new members to the Hofstra community, we have to face the fact that sometimes cherished members of our community retire. So I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege and ask you to join me in a hearty thank you and best wishes for the outstanding work over the past 18 years of Hofstra's Vice President for Facilities and Operations, Joe Barkwell, who is retiring this summer. And speaking of Joe Barkwell, Last fall, we celebrated the opening of the $75 million state-of-the-art science and innovation center, now the largest academic building on our campus. Joe Barkwell saw this construct construction through from beginning to end and got the building open for fall semester. This building, this, this building is filled with the most cutting-edge technology it houses the School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies and the Departments of Computer Science and Bioengineering from the DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science. And relatedly, the DeMattis School and the School of Natural Sciences in H class received a $1 million grant from the National Science Foundation to strengthen that computer infrastructure in the Science and Innovation Center just this year. On the faculty side, history professor Carolyn Eisenberg, an expert on American foreign relations, was recently awarded the prestigious Bancroft Prize for her 2023 book, Fire and Rain, Nixon, Kissinger, and the Wars in Southeast Asia. This award is an enormous national honor given to only two books per year written about American history or diplomacy. Assistant Professor of Graduate Nursing Donna Willenbrock was named the Nurse Practitioner of the Year by the Nurse Practitioner Association of Long Island. 
Hofstra Law Professor Teo Liebman is the recipient of the 2024 Mark Hardin Award for Child Welfare Legal Scholarship and Systems Change by the American Bar Association Center on Children and the Law. And Dr. Rebecca Natow received the 2024 Outstanding Book Award from the Society of Professors of Education for her book, Reexamining the Federal Role in Higher Education. Our students have been as active as ever. Two Hofstra students in the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, Yaw Bansu and Michelle Rabinovich, scored a dream assignment when they became the first Hofstra students to cover the Super Bowl and the whole Super Bowl week for our award-winning Hofstra radio station, WRHU 88.7 FM. They traveled to Las Vegas and interviewed NFL players and coaches, community leaders and journalists covering the game. The Herbert School has also been recognized by both Variety Magazine and The Hollywood Reporter as having one of the top film schools in the country. The Hofstra University Forensics team recently placed fifth nationally in their division and 16th overall in the open competition in the 2024 National Forensics Association Championship Tournament. These are huge wins and the best ever for Hofstra. Hofstra continues to grow and strengthen our community ties as well. This year, for the second year in a row, we hosted a day-long event to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day in collaboration with the village of Hempstead. The day's events featured speakers, panels, and dialogue, as well as music by local students. In partnership with Uniondale High School, we launched the Hofstra Uniondale Pathway Program. Through this dual credit program, 16 Uniondale High School students have been on campus weekly this semester and will continue in the fall semester, taking courses that will result in six college credits by the time they graduate from high school in 2025. These credits count toward their high school diploma and towards their future college degree, hopefully which will be at Hofstra. This spring, Hofstra was selected by the Nassau County Board of Elections as an early voting location for this election season. This will provide easy access for voting uh, for Hofstra students, faculty, and staff, as well as members of nearby communities, both later this spring and in November. On the athletics front, the combined GPA for student athletes was 3.48, which is the 23rd consecutive semester with a combined GPA above 3.0. Women's softball won the conference title last spring, as did men's soccer last fall. <laughs> we have a soccer table here tonight, I know. Men's soccer then advanced to the third round of the NCAA championship. And this was the third consecutive CAA title from the men's soccer program, which, fin which finished 17th in the nation in the final poll. They also had a program record three All-Americans and two recent members of the team, Elliot Goldthorpe and Ryan Carmichael, are now playing in the pros. <laughs> Tyler Thomas of the men's basketball team was recently named the recipient of the Haggerty Award, given to the top Division I basketball player in the New York metropolitan area. Tyler is the second consecutive honoree from Hofstra after Aaron Estrada last year. And over the past 25 years, the Pride has had seven Haggerty honorees, the most of any school. And the dance team won its 11th national championship this year in the Division I Palm competition. They are really outstanding, and I really recommend that you Google them, the Hofstra dance team, to see their routine. It's, it's quite amazing. Now, I'm sure that many of you are wondering how Hofstra is doing during these incredibly turbulent times on college campuses. I am proud to say that we have managed, on account of the maturity and character of our student body, and through the hard work and combined efforts of staff and administrators, 
all over, but particularly from the divisions of student affairs, equity and inclusion, academic affairs, and public safety to maintain a peaceful campus. At Hofstra, we have demonstrated that there can be free speech, civility, and peace, even where passions run high and beliefs and feelings are at odds. We have been steadfast in putting safety first and in, for, and in enforcing our long-stand policy of intolerance for anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and any other form of discrimination or harassment. I want to mention also that in addition to the student body in general uh, and many individual students um, and the faculty and administrators and staff, um, we have an extraordinary leader of the Student Government Association, Lincoln Anabali, who has... Lincoln, why don't you stand up? I can't see anything up here. Lincoln has been working very hard to keep all these lines of communication open and help our students understand um, that if we can speak to each other and learn from each other, um, that is the way to move forward. I hope that all of this makes you as proud of Hofstra as I am and gives you all some solace, even as events in this country and around the world continue to rage on and bring with them so many problems and so much grief. At Hofstra, we are really doing okay, and I'm very proud of it. Now, the highlights that I just presented barely scratch the surface of all that's gone on this year. You can learn more by reading the Hofstra Magazine, the new alumni magazine that was launched last fall through the efforts of Vice President Terry Coniglio and her team. Copies of the magazine were upstairs during the cocktail hour, and there should be some on your tables. This is now a, uh, we, a, we publish this two times a year in the fall and the spring. I will conclude this part of my remarks with some very happy news that will help propel Hofstra University forward during these challenging times. Hofstra recently received the largest gift ever for undergraduate education and the second largest gift in the history of the university. Mr. Charles Fry, an alumnus from the class of 1955, made provision in his estate to provide undergraduate student scholarships for the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. And that gift was on the order of $35 million. We will, we will endow this gift, and beginning next year, it will provide approximately $1,750,000 per year in perpetuity to support students in the Zarb School of Business. We now come to the time in the program when I announce this year's Teachers men and Mentor of the Year and Researchers of the Year and recognize faculty scholarly achievement. Many alumni have told me that the secret sauce of Hofstra is the connection they made with faculty while students and the influence that those professors have had and in some cases still have over their lives and their careers. Each year, graduating students in each school vote on the professor who has been most impactful to them as a teacher and as a mentor. And these faculty members are awarded the title Teacher of the Year. It's my privilege to recognize them this evening. I ask our awardees to please stand when I call your name and remain standing until all the names are called. And if you could, please hold your applause to the end. So the 2023-2024 Teachers of the Year are from the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science, Mauro Caputi, Associate Professor of Engineering. From the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, Ralph Polimeni, the Chaikin Endowed Chair in Accounting and Professor of Accounting. From the School of Health Sciences, Ibrahim Karai, Assistant Professor of Population Health. The Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences has several divisions. From the Calico School of Government, Public Policy, and International Affairs, Katrina Rochelle Sims, Assistant Professor of History. From the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, Christopher Dippel, Associate Professor of Drama and Dance. From the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, Kevin Biseglia, Associate Professor of Chemistry. 
from the Hofstra Northwest School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, Gina Pentrelli, Assistant Professors of Physician Assistant Studies. From the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, George Nicholas, Associate Professor of Radio, Television, and Film. The Maurice A. Dean School of Law, Teo Liebman, Clinical Professor of Law and Executive Director of the Monroe H. Friedman Institute for the Study of Legal Ethics from the Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at Hofstra Northwell, first 100 weeks, Zainab Nasrallah, Assistant Professor of Science Education, and from the second 100 weeks, Preeta Kurian, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics and Medicine. Let's give the Professors of the Year a big hand. This year's this year's Mentor of the Year is Craig Dalton, Associate Professor of Global Studies and Geography. Craig, will you stand up wherever you are? Okay. Three faculty won the 2023-2024 Lawrence A. Stesson Prize for Outstanding Scholarly Publication. They are Associate Professor of Engineering, Nicholas Myrna, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Daniel Miller, and Associate Professor of Law, Alex Sinna. And finally, we have two researchers of the year, Professor Eisen Nickbach, CV Star Distinguished Professor of Finance, and Professor Luciana Santo Ferrara, Assistant Professor of Biology. Please join me in congratulating all of these exceptional groups group of educators and scholars. And now to the most important part of the evening, tonight we are gathered to celebrate the exceptional David Mack, and at the same time raise money for scholarships for our students. I'm delighted to announce that tonight's event has already raised $1.4 million that will go all go towards scholarships. I thank all of you for honoring David Mack with this investment in the future of Hofstra by supporting future students. This is a wonderful way to celebrate a man whose name every Hofstra student knows and a person known across Long Island and the state of New York for his service, his kindness, his generosity, and his boundless enthusiasm for people and for life. So please enjoy this video tribute. I have known David and his family for decades. Not only is he known for his legendary philanthropy and giving to Hofstra and elsewhere, but he is a dedicated and passionate trustee who gives of his time as well. Aside from being one of the nicest men I've ever met, uh, he is an incredible businessman, uh, outstanding philanthropist, and a public servant beyond compare. The first time I met David Mack was the first time that I saw Hofstra. We ended up at the U Club, at the David Mack U Club. Uh, and I was told that David Mack was coming. So he, uh, he came in the door, he came right to me, and he gave me a big hug. Uh, and it was really a lovely, um, kind thing to do, and uh, made me feel uh, already like part of the family. I first came to Hofstra and all I saw was Mac, Mac, Mac everywhere. And I'm like, who is this person? So I met Mr. Mac in 2016, my first um, Hofstra Gala. Um, and when I think of him, I, I felt inviting, warm, approachable. David and I were very close. You know, I don't think I could be closer uh, with a brother of mine that I have with him. I had the opportunity to meet David back uh, approximately 35 years ago. I didn't know David before. Um, I first met him at the board meeting, but found him very uh, welcoming and outgoing. He is definitely a celebrity to me. I mean, and to all of Hostra. I mean, look at this campus, right? Know that, for instance, when people want something done, they say, "Call David Mack." Poor guy. If, you know, if I were David Mack, I'd never answer my phone. When David Mack wants to get something done, he doesn't give up. The phrase we use about David is he doesn't take yes for an answer. Just a just a fantastic personality. Uh, easy to talk to. Um, certainly, somebody who his opinion is valued. 
and uh, somebody that I personally seek out to get his uh, opinion on different items that are going on. I think that the Mac name is synonymous with Hofstra. David has passions and one of those at the highest level is the university. He's a graduate. He has a love for education, uh, a love for students and providing them the opportunity to be the best that they can. Well, I think the best way to say it is that David just gives of himself in every way to Hofstra. Obviously, he's been incredibly generous and he really deeply cares about this university. When it came to the university bringing presidential debates in an unprecedented manner, three, historically not done by any university, David stepped forward and was a leader in terms of sponsorship and wanting to bring that distinction to the university campus. Well, we were a small school, then it was a big deal for us. I think, I think he looked at it, not from a political point of view, but what, what is it for the university? I think that was really his main driving force. And most of the things that David does, everybody knows about because he puts his name on everything. When we first went to Austria, what always amazed him were the names on all the buildings. He said, wouldn't it be great to have your name up there? As a student of Hofstra, um, going back, you know, 50 years ago, most of the facilities that he um, helped enable weren't there when I was a student there. So I think of the sports arena and the, those type of facilities. I think it really makes a difference in the quality of our students' lives. As Dean of Students, I believe I cultivate this sense of belonging. And that's what this building provides. It gives everyone from all different nationalities, ethnicities, backgrounds, the chance to come together for this sense of I belong here. What makes the fitness center so great is that this is a student destination and having his name attached to it is just an honor. Public safety, the building is named for David Mack. He certainly understands the paramount importance of our community here at Hofstra and keeping them safe as well. The Mack Arena is the first place that our students go all together as first year students. That's where we do orientation. And it is the last place they go because that's where we hold commencement and send them off. So you might say that the student lifespan is defined by David Mack. As an athlete, I love being here. It's just a beautiful arena and we're so blessed to have these facilities and it's like an honor to be here every day. Playing in the MAC is, is incredibly inspiring to me. Um, seeing his name in front of this building every day motivates me to work hard and stay focused so that maybe one day I can have a positive impact and give back on things that are meaningful to me just as he did. When you start digging deep into it, uh, to what is public, you realize that it's, he's done a lot of great things, not only for uh, the university, but for hospitals and other charities and things like that. David's not an individual that really talks about um, the magnitude of what he and Sandra have done, not only at Hofstra, but beyond um, the greater New York community and the Palm Beach community as well. I would say that he is a, a giant in the law enforcement community. He has been committed not just in word, but in deed, and he has been somebody who will have a long-standing impact for generations on law enforcement. For the people of Nassau County, nothing is more important than that police intelligence center that is appropriately named after David Mack. David is very, very big on Jewish causes, whether it be the original synagogue that he was a member of, the one he's a member of now. I mean, if you look at any ambulance that's part of the Northwell Health System, you will see the David and Sandra Mack name on those ambulances because that's helping people. Well, here at the gala, we are honoring David Mack tonight because of his generosity and his leadership. And I hope that everybody who's attending the gala tonight will follow that lead um, and help us build our scholarship fund for the students of the future uh, so that Hofstra can remain as robust as it's been in part because of David Mack. The world would be a better place if everybody was like him, I can tell you that. Congratulations, Mr. Mack, on being honored at this year's Hofstra Gala. You are well-deserved, we appreciate you, and thank you for all you do at Hofstra. Congratulations, Mr. Mack, and thank you for all the contributions to Hofstra. Hey, David, congratulations. You've been a great friend to me, a great friend to all of New York, a great friend to law enforcement, and a great friend to so many worthy charities. You're the best, many more years. All of us wish we were David Mack. Thanks, David. 
Congratulations on the honor, David Mack. Sorry I can't be with you tonight, but I want to congratulate you on this honor. Thank you so much for your generosity through the years. David, we're all proud of you. This is well deserved on your part. And just keep on going. Nobody better than you. Congratulations, David. You are a role model, a colleague, and a friend. David, um, congratulations uh, for this well-deserved honor uh, and allowing us to say thank you for all you've done for Hofstra and continue to do for Hofstra. What a wonderful tribute. Um, so without further ado, will the honoree, Mr. David Mack, please come up to the stage. Um, so, we have this memento for you and to thank you, and it's been my own privilege to work beside you on the Hofstra Board of Trustees and to learn from you and to be your friend. So, there you are. And let me, you. let me read it to you. Okay. Let me read it to everybody else. David S. Mack, 67, that's his class year. In recognition of your accomplishments, service, and dedication, to Hofstra University, May 2, 2024. Thank you. Okay. 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 What a great tribute, thank you. I'm honored to be here tonight, and thank you for this wonderful recognition <clears throat> and for all of you supporting Hofstra and its students. I would like to thank our chairman of the board, Don Schaefer, Don, and I go back a long time with all of his friends, and of course, my fellow trustees, <clears throat> thank you. I also want to thank our president, Susan Posner. But we have to do a special thanks to Susan for her leadership a commitment to higher education. In addition, I would like to thank all the public officials that are here tonight, Republicans and Democrats. And I want you to know one thing that I feel great about in this county 
that I live in, that Jay Jacobs, Chair of the State Committee, and Nassau County, and Joe Cairo, and a great county executive, my lifelong friend, Bruce Blakeman. But behave, Bruce. <laughs> uh, all I can tell you, they have dinner, they have lunch together, and they talk about problems in this county. And I must say, it should only happen in Congress. That's not in my speech, but I had to say it. I also appreciate everyone that's here tonight, supporting Hofstra, the scholarships. I'm gen 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 <coughs> generously touched by your support. It's been <coughs> a privilege to have contributed to the development of Hofstra from a small commuter school to a nationally recognized university. Since joining the board in 1979, the following schools have opened, extending Hofstra University's campus. Hofstra University Libraries, Larry Herbert School of Communication, Stuart Nancy Rabinowitz's Honor College, Donald and Barbara Zucker School of Medicine at, at Hofstra, Northwell, Fred DeMattis School of Engineering, Applied Science, School of Health and Personal Human Resources, Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistance, Yeah, we got to keep going. <laughs> Peter S. Calico School of Government, Public Policy International, School of Sciences and Mathematics, School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts. Hofstra has hosted historic presidential debates, has been awarded countless academic achievements and honors. I've witnessed Hofstra's impressive rise and am delighted in its upward trajectory. We must continue to attract the best and brightest inventors, innovators, caregivers, crusaders. That's what this gallery is about. Your generosity will help. missing a page, but hold it. Here we go. Well, yeah, well, the page is not here. But I have to, I have to thank my wife, who's been alongside of me. Fifty-six years. Without her and her support, and our good friends, I guess I couldn't achieve what I have achieved through the years. I love Hofstra. It's my alma mater. Susan's been a friend. And all I can tell you is I'm happy to be here I'm honored by this honor. I thank you all for being here, and thank you, board, for this honor, and my fellow friends and supporters of Hofstra. Susan, keep up the good work. We want to move forward, this university and all of the alumni.
need it and want it. And thank you all. Congratulations again, David. We're all incredibly proud of your work with Hofstra and all that you've done to elevate and enhance the Hofstra name. This event has been enormously successful thanks to each of you. We're grateful for your ongoing support. Your investment contributes greatly to the success of the university and to the continued accomplishments of our students and faculty. Please enjoy dinner and dancing. Congratulations again, David. Thank you so much.